Hello and welcome to a Talmud Israeli production. Today we'll review the highlights of this week's course of Daf Yomi study, Masechet Nedarim, pages 33 through 39. Lamed Gimel through Lamed Tet. 33. Hamudar Hana Mechavero. One makes a vow not to benefit from a fellow. So what can that fellow do or not do from the vower? Shokalo at Shiklo. The other fellow can pay the vower's uh, half shekel remittance to the temple that is required of every Jew every year. He could even pay back outstanding debts that the vower might have had. And he can even return a lost object to the vower. Despite the fact that the vower seems to benefit in all three of these cases, technically speaking, this is not an example of, these are not examples of the vower benefiting from the other fellow's possessions. However, in those places where the uh, returner of a lost object is given compensation for his efforts, then it would be uh, inappropriate for the payment to be made. So rather, that payment has to be given over to the hektish. It has to be given over to the temple. Gemara explains, why are all three of these cases permitted? Avruche ari be'alma v'shari, that the other fellow is really chasing away a lion from the vower, that the, the, the temple treasurers are going to be hounding this guy for his shekel payment, and now they won't bother him because it was paid. His creditors will be hounding him for payment, now they won't bother him because it was paid. Or he gets back his lost object, which was his all along. In none of these instances did the other fellow give from his own assets to the vower, which would have been forbidden. Lamed Dalet. Amar Rava, hi to the fun of Kikar Shalhefker. What happens if a guy has in front of him a loaf of bread which was ownerless? Amar Kikar Zu Hektish. And he says, this loaf, I am declaring it to be for Hektish, for, this, for the sanctuary, sanctified. Not Lala Ochla, but then he picks it up with intent to eat it. That's no good. Mal, he's guilty of me'ila, of misappropriation. Lafikula, of the complete value of the loaf of bread. Lorisha Labanov, however, if he picked it up only for the sake of bequeathing it to his sons, but not to personally benefit from it, then he's only guilty of me'ila to the extent of the value, the tovatana'a, the value to him of bequeathing a bigger estate to his kids. Lamed 35. If a person vowed that the other fellow should not benefit uh, them, then the other fellow is allowed to uh, take truma on, on the, on the vower's produce, umasrotav and tithes, ledato, provided he does so with the permission of, with the consent of, the vower, who's, who owns the produce. Umakrivalov kinin, zavin, kinei zvavas, kinei and if the guy is a kohen, who was the other fellow, he can offer the sacrifices on behalf of the vower. Chatos v'ashamos, even, even sin offerings and guilt offerings. And he could even teach the vower Torah, Torah Shabal Peh, the oral Torah. However, he should not teach the other fellow, the vower, the Bible, Mikra. But he can teach the children of the vower the Bible. Why is it permissible to teach the Torah Shabal Peh to the vower? Because mitzvot lav lehenot ninhu, the mitzvahs are not given over for us to benefit from them, therefore there is no real hana'a in play. Lamed Vav. 36. If I were to separate Truma from my, own, from my own produce on behalf of someone else's stack of produce, that their stack of produce should now be considered chulin and rectified, mitukan, who gets to decide which Kohen receives the Truma? Do I get to decide? After all, I separated the Truma. Or does the other fellow get to decide because it's rectifying his produce? The Gemara answers, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, HaTorah Mishlo Al-Sheno Shalo, if you separate Truma from your stuff on behalf of somebody else's stuff, it's not yours, Torah Tana Shalo, the separator, gets to decide which Kohen receives the Truma. Lamed Zayin. Tanya. HaSochre Tapoel, Vishmur Tatinok, Vishmur Tapara, Vishmur Tazraim, if you hire a worker, to safeguard your baby, to babysitting, to watch over your cow, or to watch over your field of grain. Uh, you cannot pay this person wages for the work that they do on Shabbat. 
Lafikach, therefore, if something bad would have happened, the cow got lost, or the Zra'im were destroyed, on Shabbat, the Shomer, the guardian, would not be liable to make recompense. Because after all, they were not on the job. However, if the guy was being paid to work for a weekly basis, a monthly basis, a yearly basis, then he can get his wages inclusive of the Shabbat work because it's part of a larger package. And therefore, if something bad were to happen to the stuff that he's watching on the Sabbath, he would be liable uh, to uh, make recompense. Lamed Chet. God does not rest his presence on a person unless they have certain attributes. What are those attributes? Gibor, brave, strong, powerful. Ashir, wealthy. Chacham, wise. Anav, humble. And who does this derive from? Which biblical character do we learn this from? Moshe. Moshe, Rabbeinu had all these things. He was, of course, the most humble man who ever lived. He was wealthy, that he got wealth from the scraps of the sapphire stone for the second set of tablets. He was a, certainly a chacham, a wise man. And he was a gibor. He was a, a large in stature and brave, as we know from the battle against Og. Lamed Tet, 39. Pikur cholim ein lashir. The mitzvah of visiting the sick has no measure. Mayim Lashir, what does it mean? It has no measure. So the Gemara had first thought to say that it has no measure in terms of Matan Sechara, the reward you will receive for doing that mitzvah. However, the Gemara backtracks and says, yeah, but why should we distinguish between Bikr Cholim that has no measure for that versus any other mitzvah that uh, should, should or should not have a measure for the Matan Sechara, the reward? In general, we're not in the business of calculating what the reward is for one mitzvah relative to another. Rather, Abaye says, Afilu gadol etzel katan, that when it comes to Bikr Cholim, even a prominent person has a mitzvah to visit a less prominent person. That social standing is not a factor in determining the mitzvah here. Everyone does it for everybody. Rav Amar Afilu Me'apam Bayom. Rav says, the meaning of Ein Lashir has no measure, means you could do it multiple times in one day, even a hundred times in one day, so long as your presence is not a nuisance, is not bothering the sick person. If they benefit from and enjoy your uh, uh, arrival another time, then it's a mitzvah for you to do so. Everyone have a great week.